Hello everyone, myself Purushottam, working as assistant professor in Department of Computer Science and Engineering, MLRIT. In this session, I am going to talk about the variables concept. So, this is uh, today's agenda. The first I will discuss variables, next types of variables and last I will discuss instance versus static variables. So, let us get started today's session. So, what is a variable? A variable is nothing but name of the memory location. It is a small unit of storage in a program. Means, suppose whenever you are declaring any variable in a program, so what will happen means, so assume here I declared a, a variable, so int a equals to 10 and 10 will be assigned to a here. Means, what will happen internally means, a space will be allocated and the value will be stored, stored here that location name is nothing but the variable. So, this is the definition of the variable. A variable is nothing but name of the memory location and it is a small unit of the storage in the program and it is a temporary storage means these values all these variables will be stored in the RAM means it is a temporary RAM is nothing but it is a volatile memory. So, volatile memory means whenever your machine is switched off so automatically your data will be erased means all memory all uh, variables data will be erased here. And in another way also we can define like variable is a container where you can store the value. In different ways we can define these variables. So, as name suggests a variable is nothing but the value stored in a variable can be varied during execution of the program. As name suggests variable, variable means the value of the variable will be varied during execution of the program. It is not fixed, so it will be varied during execution of the program. So, that is the reason we will call it as a variable. So, in Java, we can we can categorize the variables in different types. Okay, before that, so what is the syntax of the variable? So, this is the syntax of the variable. So, first of all, we need to declare a variable with a data type. So, after that, the variable name, after that, the value. And here, we need to use the assignment operator here. So, this value will be assigned to left side value. Means, this value will be called R value. And this value will call L value. So, this R value will be assigned to L value here. And this variable name can be any valid identifier. So, I already explained the valid identifier rules. So, it must be valid identifier. Next, suppose if you take an example, int a equals to 10. Now, the 10 is the actual value. This value we are assigning to a and a is a type of integer. That is the meaning of this statement. Suppose if you are taking one more, suppose here I declared a character means this a is actual value and this is assigned to a variable c and c is a character type. Now, so Java is a strongly typed programming language like suppose if you take an example like a python, python is a not a strongly typed programming language means without declaring a variable so directly you can use in python means but in Java is a strongly typed programming language means if you want to use any variable in a program, so compulsory you need to declare that variable. So, suppose if you want to access A, A must be declared in your program. If you want to access C, C must be declared in your program. So, otherwise it will throw compile time error. So, that is the reason we can say that Java is a strongly typed programming language, but Python is a not strongly typed programming language. Why? Python is a dynamically typed programming language means, so suppose if you are taking a like a equals to 10 means based on this r value this a type will be decided means dynamically this type will be decided. So, that is why it is called what the dynamically typed programming language python is a dynamically typed programming language. So, suppose if you take an example a equals to suppose hello. Now, a equals to hello means here a is pointing to 10 and here a is pointing to string means dynamically so this type will be decided 
So Python is a dynamically typed programming language, but Java is a strongly typed programming language. The strongly typed programming language in the sense before using any before using any variable in a program, so compulsory you need to declare that variable. So then only you can access. Otherwise, it leads a compile time error. So naming convention of the variables. So as per the Java documentation, all user defined variables, all user defined variables are small case. So compulsory, it must be a small case. Next, all constant variables, all constant variables are uppercase letter. Uppercase letter means, so suppose if you take an example, final double pi. So it's a pi value 3.141. So this is the pi value, actual pi value. And this pi value is a constant value means so during execution of the program i do not want to what change this value in such cases you need to declare that uh, variable with a final keyboard the final keyword if you are declaring any variable with a final keyword the modification is not possible so this becomes the constant variable in constant variable so what is the naming convention means all characters must be uppercase so that is a recommended naming convention as per the java documentation so you need to follow this rule so all characters are uppercase now so suppose if you take one more example final int database version so version here it is a one assume in my entire application the database version is one in the entire my application the database version is a two means if you want to fix the value okay during execution of the program i don't want to change the value so in such cases you need to declare that variable with a final keyword then it becomes the constant variable so the constant variables are the naming convention all characters must be uppercase so you can see here the database every character is uppercase every character is uppercase in pi so p and i must be uppercase so these rules are optional only but it is highly recommended to follow why means if you want to become a professional java programmer if you are become the java programmer so you need to follow all these rules okay anyhow these rules are optional if you are taking the normal pi also in here so if you are taking the normal pi also it will valid but you need to follow these conventions very important so coming to the types of variables so in java variables can be categorized into three types so one is a local variable second one is the instance variable and third one is a static variable so in java all variables can be categorized into three types first one is a local variable static instance variable and a static variable so we'll discuss one by one now now first local variable so local variables means the variables which are declared inside a method inside a block or inside a constructor then it is called the local variables in three areas we can declare these local variables the first area is a method or a block or a constructor if you are declaring any variable inside a method or a block or a constructor then we can say those variables are local variables so suppose if you take an example here i have a class the class name is a student and here i have a method a student info and if you are declaring any variable inside a method then it becomes local variable so here i declared a variable name that is a local variable and here i declared a variable that is age so this is also local variables so as per the definition of the local variable if you are declaring any variables inside a method inside a block or inside a constructor then it becomes what a local variables now so the variables are created when block is entered or the function is called and destroyed after exiting the block and when call returns from the function means whenever your function is called means as we know that so whenever your function is called it will be stored in the stack so suppose assume so method one is stored in the stack and whenever you are calling one more method and that method will be also stored in the stack so whenever your method is called so your local variables will be get initialized and whenever your method 
execution is done means whenever this method is popped out from the stack so your function means your local variables will get destroyed so that is the meaning of the statement means see here these variables are created when block entered or function called and destroyed when it will be destroyed so after exiting from the block or when the call returns from the function means whenever method call happened so these local variables will be get initialized after method execution is done after operation is done so all these local variables will get de destroyed and the scope of the local variables the lifetime of these local variables are inside a method inside a constructor and inside a block means wherever you are declaring suppose if you are declaring a variable inside a method the scope of the local variables are restricted to method if you are declaring a variable inside a constructor sometimes we may declare uh, variables inside a constructor directly inside a constructor in such cases it is restricted to only constructor only and if you are declaring a local variable inside a block and the scope will be restricted to only block so all these points again i will explain the programmatically as of now i am explaining only the points now so jvm won't provide initial values for these local variables means the initialization is a mandatory so here the jvm won't provide any initial values why means these local variables are declared inside a method so compulsory the programmer is responsible to initialize these values if you are not initialize these values so it leads a compile time error compulsory initialization is a mandatory here see here so initialization of the local variable is a mandatory if not it will generate the compile time error and so one more rule the modifier concept is not applicable for the local variables means we cannot use a public or private protected or default so these are as we know that these are the access specifiers access modifiers so these access specifiers are not allowed in local variables the reason here is the local variable scope is uh, restricted to the method okay so using access modifier you cannot increase the scope you cannot decrease the scope the scope is restricted to only method so that is the reason access modifier concept is not applicable for local variables and local variables will be stored in the stack area so as we know that the jvm having the different memory location like heap area method area jvm stack native method stack and pc register now where your local variables will be stored means the local variables will be stored in the jvm stack area as we know that all local variables will be stored in the method the whenever method call happen the method will be stored inside a stack so whenever your date whenever your method is stored in the stack means whenever method call happen so automatically it will be stored inside a stack so all local variables will be stored inside a jvm stack so that is the meaning here the local variables will be stored inside a stack area so suppose if you take an example here here i have a program so as we know that the local variables will be uh, can be created inside a method inside a block and inside a constructor so here i declared a variable i equals to 10 and it is declared inside m1 it is a method normal method and here second case i declared j equals to 20 and it is declared inside a constructor as we know that the class name and constructor name must be same and you can see here the test and parenthesis means it is a constructor so here i declared a variable here so it is also possible if you are declaring a variable inside a method or inside a constructor and sometimes you may declare a variable inside a block so block in the sense if you are writing like this means open brace and the closed brace collectively we will call it as a block open brace and the closed brace collectively we will call it as a block now so here i declared a k equals to 10 and this is nothing but it is a block
So, this is the first case declaring a local variables inside a method. It is the second case declaring a variable inside a constructor and it is the third case declaring a variable inside a block. And so, all these points again I will explain the programmatically now. All these points I will explain the programmatically now. So, suppose I have a sample program. I will create a method here. So, public void m1 method. Now, here I will declare int i equals to sum 10. System dot out dot print ln. Here I am printing i. So, I will call this m1. So, this is the instance method. So, directly we cannot call inside a static area. So, you need to create object sample s equals to new sample. Now, s dot m1 means here method call is happened method call here we are calling this method. Now, what will happen? It will store in the stack JVM stack. So, these variables will be get initialized. Now, if you run this one, it will print i equals to 10. So, it will print 10 simply it will print 10. Now, as I mentioned the initialization of these variables are mandatory. So, see here, here I just declared i value, but I not initialize this value. Now, what will happen if I simply run this program without initializing just declared, but no initialization here. Now, what will happen? You will get error variable i might not have been initialized meaning. So, here initialization of these local variables are mandatory. So, compulsory you need to initialize this value. Now, so initialization can be anywhere like suppose after declaring this variable you can initialize here no problem in second line if you want you can initialize no problem but within this block before using this variables initialization is a mandatory now see here before using this variables initialization is a mandatory but here if i interchange this line so now this is an invalid initialization is happened after using these variables. We see here, here I declare a variable and already printing this variable Okay, and here I initialize this is invalid. Why? So, here you uh, declared and here only you are accessing after accessing you are initialized this is invalid. So, before accessing before accessing compulsory you need to initialize like this. So, then only it will be valid. So, after, otherwise while declaring itself you can initialize like this. So, before so while declaring itself you can you can initialize this value and so this is one case declaring a variable within the method this is first case and second case. So, declaring a variable inside a block now as I mentioned open brace and closed brace collectively we will call it as a block. Now, so, so suppose if you are taking like int k equals to some 10. Now, so this is also possible system dot out dot print ln here I print a k. Now, here I will take better I will take 20. Now, so this is the second case declaring a variable inside block next the third case declaring a variable inside a constructor. Now, it is a constructor and if you are declaring a variable like int j equals to suppose a 30 system dot out dot print ln j. Now, so, this is also possible. Now, whenever you are creating a method, sorry, whenever you are creating object, so this constructor will be called and this is j will be printed. Okay. So, whenever your object is created, whenever your object is created, all instance blocks will be get initialized. So, this k will be print and whenever you are calling this method, so this will be get initialized and it will print i value is 100. Okay. So, suppose if you print, you will get like this. So, 20 and 30 and 100. So, why 20, 30 and 100 means a 20 is nothing but 20 is nothing but so instance block 
okay whenever your object is created instance block will get initialized and whenever your object is created and here the constructor will be called so the constructor will data will be executed that is a j equals to 30 will be executed and here you are calling what m1 method so lastly you are calling m1 method so this value will be what execute so the order is what the first instance block next constructor and the next method will be executed so as i mentioned the scope of these local variables are restricted to method only means outside of the method you cannot access so suppose i want to access i want to access i here so it is not possible so suppose if you are taking i so this is not possible so i is declared in a method m1 but here you are trying to access inside a constructor this is not possible why means the lifetime of this i is restricted to this block only means this method only here to here only so after method execution is done so this i will get expired so you cannot access this i and the scope is restricted to what this method so by using access modifier you cannot increase or you cannot decrease the scope suppose if you want to increase the scope you can use a public so but this public is not allowed here why the access modifier concept is not applicable for the local variables the reason here is the scope here is restricted to method or block or constructor so by using access modifier you cannot increase or you cannot decrease the scope so access modifier concept is not applicable so whatever access modifier even if you want to use less scope private so this is also not valid you can see here if you run this program you will get error illegal start of expression so this is about the local variables so that's about today's session thank you